back with more on our Fox News alert. The investigation into the Brussels terror attack ramping up. For that, let's bring in Howard Gutman. He's the former U.S. ambassador to Belgium and a former special assistant to the FBI director. He knows this area like the back of his hand and was in Brussels as the chaos was unfolding uh, yesterday morning. Howard, good to see you. You were with us early yesterday morning, as I said, when, when chaos was on the streets. We really appreciate, appreciate you being here with us then and back today. Uh, off the top, just your response uh, to um, how people are feeling there in Brussels. I mean, here we are the next day. Um, so many people, I'm sure, still in shock uh, to what has happened in their own community. There's a combination of shock and depression, and the only time I've ever seen anything like it was what uh, the people in Washington felt when we were leaving our law offices during 9-11, uh, trying to find shelter and not sure what happened. Um, so now that there's some calm that it's, there's not going to be continued explosions uh, today, the depression has set in. If you go by the Malbec uh, train station, for example, uh, there's a lone flower cordoned off uh, and just people watching the site in disbelief. Yeah, earlier we were looking at live pictures from the memorial uh, going on there. Um, Mr. Ambassador, there's been some additional information that has come in today, the latest information that two of these suspects were brothers, and then the third suspect that they are still looking for is directly linked to the Paris attack. Um, with your experience there, how large do you believe this cell to be? It's a real odd finding so far. The two brothers being reported were not jihadists. They were, you know, they were hoods. They had pulled off uh, local money store robberies and gotten to shootouts on uh, stick-ups and armed robberies. Um, so it looks like uh, someone did a good job recruiting sort of lowlifes. But how do you get lowlifes to blow themselves up? Um, so I think the, the facts aren't all piecing together yet. And then if someone blew themselves up at the airport, mm -hmm. who the heck blew up Malbec? Someone was quite alive an hour later. So I think there's uh, more uncertainty, and we're going to have to see how it plays out. But it looks like this was a cell that just uh, was bigger than they thought. It involved people from different walks of life. Uh, and it doesn't all add up yet. Uh, I suspect we'll have to learn far more. And, and we want to clarify for people, we've just uh, received some new information. Uh, initial reports had said that the two individuals in dark clothing in the surveillance photo that we've been showing were the two brothers who have now been named um, in this attack. That's not the case. Instead, it is one brother who apparently was involved in the airport explosion, and then another brother, as you were just mentioning, that was involved in the explosion at the train station. And then they're still looking, obviously, for that suspect there in the lighter colored clothing. But Howard, Howard, I, I want to find that that information. I wanted to ask you too. What we have you uh, because we know as we learn more about the suspects, as Heather was just talking about, um, new details coming in there for, from the Molenbeek community. I mean, you know this community well. Help break this down. Help us understand this community and why we're seeing such terror coming out of it. So uh, the Molenbeek community itself um, is a second and third generation Moroccan, Turkish, Arab community. Uh, the parents came, you know, uh, a generation ago to do labor jobs uh, in Belgium when Belgium was very thriving. Uh, but this generation has found itself uh, sort of on the outside looking in, not much, not much work, 40%.